Hey traders, John Hal here, and this is just another market update to show you what I see. We're going to look at the daily charts in this video. We're also going to be looking at the hourly charts. So I want to show you something that I'm seeing that is very interesting. So anyway, guys, let's get straight into it. Do not place a trade based on what you're seeing in this video today because trading is risky and it can cause substantial financial loss. There are so many areas you need to become good at to become a good trader. Emotional mastery, chart reading, trading systems, money and trade management. So this video is just educational only to help you become a much better trader. All right, so let's just quickly have a look at what the market's been doing. This is a quick update. We can see that on the S&P 500, we can see basically we had a bit of a nothing day looking on the Dow Jones as well too. This is the Dow Jones, bit of a nothing day as well too. You can see how we're really holding this support level here. Looking at that there, looking at the Russell, the Russell did the same thing too. Now, with the Russell, it's really interesting and I wanna show you something with the Russell a bit, bit later on. And also the, uh, obviously the NASDAQ as well too, bit of a nothing, bit of, bit of a nothing day. So, um, so but looking at these, these charts here guys, what I do see is, you can see where we're at right now, but one thing I want to show you is what the hourly chart looks like. So let's actually go down to the hourly chart, and I want to show you something that I'm seeing here. Now let's go back to this is the this is the Nasdaq, and I want to go down say to the S and P 500. All right, so let's just why did that not change? Oh, it did change. <laughs> um, so I want to go to the S and P 500, and again, guys, I've been talking about this for quite some time, and you you guys have been following me now. I've been talking about this for quite some time. Look at the peaks and troughs, right? So we had this trough down here. We came up, went sideways, made this peak, came down, made this trough, went up, made a peak, made a higher trough, made a higher peak, made a sort of a, a slight higher trough, made a lower peak. And as you can see, right, this first lower peak here was the, was the turning point of this move down here. So if you're watching, especially that level there, as soon as this level started breaking down, you would have started to see, especially right here on the S&P, we are getting ready for some for, for a move down. Because you started to see the peak, see, see how that peak was lower. Some of you guys have been not really focusing on these, and this is just, this is the, the catalyst of what the market's doing, right? So then the market comes down here and makes a trough. So who's in control of this stock, or who's in control of this market right now on the short term? The sellers are, right? Because we're now we're making what? We're now making lower, we're making... Uh, peaks now we're making lower troughs and now lower peaks so we may get a we, we may get a run to the high side we may not now that's the first thing i want to say the next thing i want to say is that that there's also there's also a thing called strength in moves and i won't get into too much of a detail here but essentially what that means is you can see how there's strong buyers or there's weak buyers there's two different types of things right strong buyers is like this bam 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 all right it just goes up now, weak buyers is this. Now, when the weak buyers happen, what does that look like? If you, especially if you draw a trend line from down here to here. Looks like a bit of like a flag formation, right? Let me see if I can grab like a bit of a trend line here, right? Looks like a bit of a flag formation. You know what I'm saying? So, it looks like that the, that the S&P 500 may be in a situation where it's trying to form like a little bear flag. And you can see what's happening here now. now we are definitely at these at these levels of support, and you can see how the market didn't really rally today. It just sort of held this level of support, which is a sort of a weekly, daily, uh, and also sixty minute support. It's, 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 this whole level three here is a lot of support. So I'm not saying the market's going to go down, but I am saying that the buyers are struggling here right now. And what we want to start to see is we want to start to see some some movement to the high side, some higher peaks, higher troughs. That's going to start seeing the, the, the tune change. But for now, guys, for now, you can start to see that's, what's, that's what we're seeing on the S&P 500. Now, looking at the Dow Jones, very, very similar. And you can see, especially on the Dow Jones, if you're looking at, and this is sort of like this, you can see this level through here, especially this level, all this level up through here, where you've got, you've got this point here, you got this point through here, and you got all this point through here. You can see how the Dow Jones, especially the Dow Jones, right, came all the way down, broke past these, especially this, uh, broke, broke past these levels through here, and now we're forming what? What does it look like there? It looks like a a, a bear flag formation, right? So we've got these weak, weak, very weak buyers. So 
Uh, that is a very weak sign, guys. It is really a weak sign. So I would not be too surprised to see this movement go down. Now, I'm not saying it's going to go down. We still got to wait for confirmation. Now, what is confirmation for me? I want to see a break. Below, I want to see a close below this trend line here. If we get a a close below this trend line here, then we're likely to see another move to the downside, and maybe that's the start of the move that I'll, that I'll, I'm actually seeing in the markets. Meaning, maybe that's going to be the start of the move we actually see that it's going to flush us back down to here. So, so as you can see on the on the hourly chart on, on the hourly chart, guys, if we up the hourly chart, you can see that's what's happening with the Dow Jones. With the Russell, I wanted to show you the Russell because you can see the Russell, this is a bit of a support here, but if you're looking at the short term, you can see how this this uh, latest this latest sort of support here is now acting as a resistance. So we're stuck in this level here, but once again, as you can see, it's come down and, and we're moving down. Now, when I talk about the peaks and troughs, guys, as you can see, everything's in the peaks and troughs, right? Look at that, higher trough, look at the peak made a higher peak, higher trough, we made this high peak up here, come down, made a slight lower trough, look, look at that, lower peak, and as you saw this day here, look at that down day there, there, and then what happened the next day, Wooshka, right? So that it's all in the peaks and troughs, guys, please remember that. And as you can see, I'm just looking at a blank chart, and just showing you what's happening here. And uh, as you can see right now, right, we've got these strong sellers, got these weak buyers, I would not be too surprised to see we have a bit more downside, and the NASDAQ gap down a lot, a lot as well too, so... Anyway, guys, that's it for me. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, please keep an eye on those peaks and troughs, guys, and don't be so biased on one way. I don't know whether this market's going to hold here or go up. You know, if you're looking at, say, the S&P 500 and looking at the daily chart, let's go to the S&P 500 here and look at the daily chart. <clears throat> this could hold and rally back up and make new highs. I doubt it, guys, and if you... My okay now this is my this is I'm gonna go on a rant now of my opinion. If you actually notice what's happening out there, the world is not in the same place it was for the last couple of years. Look at China. China just recently had a had a trading hop because it was down seven percent in one day. You know what I mean? Now seven percent does does that sound like much? Well, if seven percent is from here. Seven percent is <laughs> is basically that is six percent. This is a 7% drop in, in the S&P. So you might think, oh, 7%, stocks do that all the time. Yeah, stocks do that. But if the whole index does that, where we get like a flash move, where right from here down to there, that's a 7% move. And that's what, and then suddenly, suddenly the, the China market had its, had its trading hold. So as we can see, guys, by looking through the market, by sorry, by looking through the stocks and by looking through the market, you can see that that's what happened with the Chinese market. Let me see if I can bring up a chart of the Chinese market. All right, found it. So um, this is the Shanghai. This is the Shanghai uh, index here, and as you can see, what's happened with the Shanghai index? We will rally. We rallied up through here, and just mark my words, guys. Please remember this. If I go to the let's go to the weekly chart. This is the this is the uh, this is the daily chart. If I go to the weekly chart, I want to show you the vertical move in which bust booms and bust happen okay now hear me out here by looking at this by looking at this stock or by looking at this chart right now there's a few things that really do make up what goes up really quickly comes down really quickly okay so you can see here look how fast it went up and then went up and then went up and then suddenly what happened came down came back up gave this lower peak what was that that was the first major lower peak in a while and then boom, we came down and we got hammered through 2008, okay? And then went sideways, it had a massive boom again, and now look what's happened, and there we go. So for a bubble, for a crash to happen in any market, we generally need, especially in the indexes, we need a massive boom, okay? We need a massive boom. And you can see here on the weekly chart, we're starting to, we're starting to move down as well too. So if I go to, say, the daily chart, you can see what happened here. The Shanghai index. This was the. This was the Shanghai. This was the the, the move down I was talking about here. So, uh, yeah, you got almost almost a seven percent down day, and then you got this is the this is the trading day here. So you can see how this day here wiped out pretty much most of two or three months. So by looking at that there, guys, the the China market is going down. Now I'll go back on my what I was saying before. The China market is is getting hammered right now, and China is connected to everyone in the world. You've got the US, you've got the US bubble, meaning the US debt. You've got so many wars happening right now. There's so many things happening right now in this world, guys, 
that you've just got to sit back and think, just saying, hang on a minute, this just does not feel right. If I go, this is the this is the S and P. Uh, that's the Shanghai. If I go to the S and P five hundred, we go to the Dow Jones and go to the. Let me take everything off the screen here and go to the weekly chart. And I squeeze it up. Look how look look how much this has just gone up, up and up and up. To me, that just does not feel right. You know what I mean? Now, yes, we haven't got the vertical move like like the like um. We have we haven't we haven't got the vertical move like the Shanghai index did, but we still have got a pretty steep movement to the high side. If we go now to the monthly chart, you can really start to see the impact of what has been happening in this market. Look at that vertical move. Now, yes, that that does happen in booms markets and stuff like that, and we do have a big run up. But guys, things things are different now. You know what I mean? And so I'm not saying the market's going to crash, but I'm just saying don't be so biased either way. And that's where you need to be making sure you're trading strategies where you can capitalize where the market does go up or down. You know what I mean? Like no one knows what's going to happen. But I think most people know. And if you have a look at that, let me actually do this here. Let me bring up so let me bring up the volume indicator here. And I want to show you this here. This would be this will show you something to be really, really interesting here. So let me bring up the volume, just volume here. Alright, then we're gonna bring up volume, and this is the Dow Jones. You can see the volume here on the charts and so on and so forth. But let me bring up a weekly chart and let me squeeze this up here so you can see by looking at this guys now look at this pre 2009 okay pre 2000 or pre 2008 look at the average volume the average volume was up here between a bit over one billion dollars a week okay one billion dollars a week you can see how much how much how much money how much people's money was in the markets how much confidence they had in the markets Makes sense. You can see that through there. Let me see if I can, if I go to a monthly chart. With it. Is that a better demonstration? Monthly chart. Yeah, yeah. So the monthly chart here. So you can see, from basically, basically two thousand and one all through to two thousand and nine, you can see how there were, a lot of people were in the markets. Just a lot of people were in the markets. And suddenly, what happened is this, guys. And this is the one thing that's that's showing me this is just not right. You can see how this there was uh, there was actually uh, on average uh, per month there was about five billion dollars, uh, probably a bit more. Okay, about five billion dollars a month on average that was going through these markets. So, but if you have a look, what's been happening recently? We've been going up here, but the volume has been tapering off. That's not right. That's not right. Now we're tapering off as low as you know we're talking about maybe one to two billion dollars, maybe two billion dollars a month. That's less than half of the average that's been happening for this last decade. So from 2000 to 2010, we had average of that. From now 2010 to where we are right now, we're now getting lower and lower. And we're starting to pick up a little bit here where the volume's starting to pick up. But guys, as you can see, right, this just does not feel right. You saw, you saw this market here, this boom up through here, and you saw how this volume got steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper. That's what generally what happens in a boom market. You know, I mean, you start to get an increase. You start, you start, you start to get an increase, and then we had this. We didn't have a crash, right? But we had this sort of pullback through here. But when you start to get some a movement up, like we can see through here, and then we're getting this, we're, we're getting this sort of steep movement through here, and then we're now getting this taper off in volume. You can start to see, guys, especially even on the weekly chart, you can see the tapering off of the volume there. This market doesn't have the volume, and it's only because of the it's only because of the pumped up of the governments that the market's doing this, that that this is happening. So, anyway, guys, that's my rant for the day. No one knows what's going to happen. Uh, for me personally, I trade strategies, especially right now, where I can benefit from either side of the market, and uh, and I really suggest you look at strategies. I teach that um, I teach that obviously, you know, down obviously on on my website. But the thing is, guys, make sure that you are. You are being careful and protecting yourself because no one knows what's going to happen. But what I do say is that I believe and never knows that this 2016 is going to be one of the most volatile years I believe in history. And that's just opinion. No one knows what's going to happen. I may be wrong. But this is just a video, guys, to help you see, see show you what's happening and show you what's happening in the markets. And I hopefully, guys, I can show you what's you know being careful of what's happening in the markets now. One thing I do say, and I do want to leave you with, is remember, guys, always look at the peaks and troughs. 
What's the peaks and troughs say on the Dow Jones? Peak, we actually had a lower peak here. Lower trough, lower trough, lower trough. Who's in control of this market right now? If you look at the Dow Jones, what's happening here? We're actually getting lower peaks and lower troughs. Now remember, that's exactly what we got. We got small little, we got many lower peaks and lower troughs before, before we had a big crackdown. So always look at the peaks and troughs. Yes, we can get a rally and we can get, but the tune does not change. The tune does not change in this market right now unless we get a higher peak. Unless this market rallies and rallies strong above this peak here, then the tune does not change. The sellers, sellers overall major have, the overall sellers have the control here overall. And if we do break above here, then the buyers are going to start likely to take control and roll out. But if we don't break past this previous peak and run up a little bit here and come back down, then we will start to see some serious move downside. That's just what's likely going to happen. Okay. And so anyway, guys, that's a little update for me. I, this is normally, this is a bit longer market update what I do here, but I thought I'd just share some, some things that I'm sharing with you guys. And don't be so, oh, well, don't, don't be so, don't be so biased either way. And the only way you can be biased, more biased on one side, bears or bulls, is by reading the peaks and troughs. And therefore, I'm saying the charts are telling me that there's more weakness in this market than strength at this particular time. And I would not be too surprised to see some more downside. But once I said, as I said before, guys, if we do start to rally and break this peak here, we will start the race for new highs. But if it doesn't, and we race up and we fail, and we definitely start to break these significant lows here, we will start to see some significant selling pressure on the downside, and probably even quick, really quick, maybe even like this is happening. And you know what's gonna happen, guys? If that does happen, we're gonna suddenly, suddenly out of nowhere, we're gonna start to see news announcements happening. We're gonna start to see uh, things happening in the markets. It's like, oh, look, you know, China did this, or there was a bomb here, or there was a threat in here, or there was something in the news. Just magically something happens in the markets or some sort of news comes out that makes the selling go down. But the charts were telling us, hang on a minute, we are very, very weak. So guys, right now, sellers have it right now. Yes, we can rally for the short term. Doesn't mean the sellers gonna keep going down, 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 down. But the overall market is saying the sellers are in control and, the, and there's more weakness than, than there's, there's a lot more weakness in this market than there is bullishness. We're out of a whole bunch of support levels. We break that. We're likely to see a lot more serious moves to the downside. I hope you enjoyed this market update. Remember, success can be yours if you go climate. So step up, take massive action, and face your fears today.